and welcome to the Kingdom of the Geeks. If you're here for the first time, nice to meet you, I'm Kitty. So if you're a big fan of Shane Dawson like I am, you know that his new movie Not Cool just came out on iTunes. This has been a long time coming. I've been a fan of his for over six years. I think I've been a fan of Shane Dawson longer than I have been with my boyfriend, which is a little funny. And I'm so happy that I finally got to meet him this past weekend. I went to the premiere on Saturday and it was honestly one of the most fun movie going experiences of my entire life. I had such a good time. Just before the movie, I was really worried about sneaking food inside the theater and then I entered in and I realized that everybody was eating and I was like, oh my god, I'm among my people, thank god, I can eat my cheese on a stick and not worry about somebody going, what the hell is that bitch eating? Shane himself came and talked to the audience just before the movie started and I partially went deaf. <laughs> Thanks you guys. And honestly, I was a little bit worried about the fact that I'm one of the older Shane Dawson fans and I was among the crowd of mostly teenagers, but it was so much fun because I felt like all of you were just as excited to be there as I was and you were so enthusiastic and you screamed every time something funny happened or Shane came on camera and I was just cracking up the entire time. It was basically like watching the movie with a bunch of your really cool teenage friends, which made me feel a little bit younger. <laughs> Shut up, 32 is not that old! <laughs> Honestly, I really love teen rom-coms, and the last time a movie got me this excited was when Eurotrip came out. And I own Eurotrip, because I've seen it about uh, 300 million times. Because I love it. Because it's awesome. And you bet your ass I'm gonna own Not Cool 2, because I plan on watching that movie over and over. It is so good. So I'm gonna break it down like this. I'm gonna tell you my five favorite things about the movie Not Cool, and why you should go get it right now on iTunes. Number one, it was very Shane Dawson. If you've been watching his videos for the past few years, you know what his sense of humor is, you know what his style is like, you know the kind of material he puts out there. So you really shouldn't have been surprised by anything that happened in this movie. The movie was raunchy, it was sweet, it had some really sweet romantic moments that led into humorous moments, which is very Shane Dawson. And I basically feel like he didn't deviate so much from who we know him to be on YouTube. And that's really great because that leads into my number two favorite thing about Dog Cool is the appearance of Aunt Hilda and Paris. Guy dressing in drag? Yep, yeah, just, that's just an everyday Shane Dawson thing. It's no big deal. We're used to this. But seriously, those little cameos in the movie were so hilarious. I nearly fell out of my chair. The only problem is that the audience was screaming so loud when Aunt Hilda or Paris would come on screen that I couldn't even hear the dialogue. So I'm definitely going to get the movie on iTunes later because I really need to rewatch it just for the dialogue alone. My number three favorite thing about this movie are the really hilarious scenarios that you just normally wouldn't expect in a movie like this. I'm telling you, last time I saw shit like this being done, it was in Eurotrip. I mean, our opening scene involved a glory hole in a bathroom stall. Right there. It's very Shane Dawson. It was like the most perfect introduction. Like, welcome. This is what the movie's gonna be about. Enjoy. I like that there was equal opportunity nudity, which means that there was boobs and there was dick and balls. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because uh, I think some directors forget that some of us ladies, we really like to see some nudity too. And we don't just like to see boobs. My number four favorite thing about this movie are the genuine relationships between all the characters. I like the relationship that Scott has with his sister. It's very genuine in a way that that's how brothers and sisters are. Sometimes brothers and sisters are kind of close. They don't really talk and don't communicate about things. I feel like there was none of that fakey closeness that we see a lot of times between brother and sister characters in movies. So that was really good. I feel like the relationship between Scott and Tori was very well done too. It wasn't overdone. It wasn't overly romantic. It didn't make me want to go bleh. You know, it was natural and fun, and it's pretty much exactly what would happen if two college students found their way back home for a weekend and decided to hook up. Love, love Drew Monson. I think that guy is so freaking talented, and I really like the relationship that he has with his crush in the movie. I'm obviously not going to give away the ending, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but 
I love the ending because it's very genuine and it's not sugar coated and it's not overdone and even though it's still raunchy and crazy it's not unrealistic in a way that it ends. That watermelon scene by the way I saw it a hundred times in the trailers and then when I saw it in the movie I laughed just as hard and it almost fell out of my chair. This movie is just full of these really great scenarios that make you laugh so hard that you are like bent over from laughter and you feel like you're about to die. Tori's crazy ass family was one of the funniest things in the movie. Any scenario that involves your crazy aunt talking about how she was abducted by aliens is the winner. I love Tori's blind sister played by Lisa Schwartz. She was so so cute and funny. That whole family dynamic was hysterical and, and wrong in every way shape and form and absolutely hilarious. It's the kind of family dynamic that kind of makes you cringe a little bit but at the end of the day you're like Aw, they're sweet. Which leads into my number five favorite thing about this movie, which is the appropriate language. I hated watching teen movies in the 90s because they would cast all these 30 year old actors and give them lines like they were reciting Shakespeare. They were like perfectly scripted and they would say things that just don't make any sense. They are not things that teenagers would say. And that always really bothered me. I was just like, can we just get some actual teenagers in a movie? Or at least write a script that sounds like actual teenagers because we don't talk like that. This is the kind of movie where you see teenagers or young kids, young college students, behave exactly like young kids or young college students. They smoke pot, they drink, they curse, they, they do disgusting things that all teenagers are prone to doing. They make stupid decisions, they act on their hormones, this is just how kids are. And honestly, it kind of made me remember my high school days or early college days when shit like that did happen. When you get to your 30s, you're gonna back at days like that and be like, oh, good old days. So Shane, thank you for making this really awesome movie that not only young kids, but also adults can enjoy. And I really appreciate its authenticity and the fact that these are normal kids acting like typical kids and um, situations they get into are fucking hilarious, but they're also situations that normal kids would get into because let's face it, when you're like 19, 20 years old, you're just a giant bag of hormones and that's pretty much all that drives you. Of course, at the end of the night, after the movie, I got to meet Shane himself. And honestly, it felt like meeting a friend that I haven't really met yet. Um, which may sound really stupid, but I've been watching him for so long that I honestly am really, really proud of him for making this. Because there aren't a lot of people like Shane with his style and his vision and there aren't a lot of people who would make a movie um, not just for themselves but for the enjoyment of other people and I think that's what he always strives to do. I feel like Shane is the kind of person who just gets kids, he just gets teenagers. Which is great because you can reach out to this fantastic audience and I have met some of you on Saturday and honestly you guys are fucking cool. You guys are all so nice and so fucking cool. I got complimented on my boobs by a young girl and I was like really? Thanks! I also got to meet Drew Monson, who is so freaking tall and so nice and funny. Honestly, if that dude isn't in some big movie roles in a few years, I'm gonna be freaking shocked because he's so talented. Altogether, it was such a fun, hilarious movie. Go see it with your friends, you will laugh your ass off. And Shane, if you're watching this review, thank you so much for always creating such original, awesome content that reaches out to all kinds of viewers. I really appreciate it and you've always really inspired me. Because you know what? I remember what it's like to be in high school and to be a young ugly duckling and thinking that you're never gonna get laid and you're never gonna be with anybody because you're just so freaking pathetic. And then you grow up and you realize, damn, relationships are hard work. I should've stayed single longer. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I'm gonna keep praising this movie on Twitter because it's so, so good. And I'm gonna provide the link below to where you can download it on iTunes. Thank you so much if you're watching this review. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for watching my review. My name is Kitty, this is Salem, and I will see you next time. Bye!